In this video, we're going to have a look at the human microbiome and some of the aspects about human skin and in particular gram positive cocci. Hello, hope you're all doing okay. Tim Sandal back with a, another um, talk around clean rooms. This one's going to be fairly uh, brief. I'm going to be having a look at clean room microorganisms or what's perhaps more technically known as clean room microbiota and perhaps what might have been referred to a few years ago as microflora but that kind of links bacteria to the plant world which isn't overly accurate so microbiota is our preferred term okay so why are clean room microorganisms important well for those who need to understand contamination control then understanding the type of microorganism gives us a clue about whether or not it is expected in a given area and also we can examine the types of organisms for changes in trends look for shifts from the norm which might inform about maintenance work or cleaning and disinfection practices um, and also we can try sometimes to connect different um, organisms together to offer clues say for how something got from grade C to grade B or from grade B to grade A for, for example. Um, now a lot of what we're seeing and we're detecting and recovering are the microorganisms associated with human skin and that's because the human in the clean room as we've seen in previous videos presents the greatest risk. Now the microbial ecology of the human skin is very complex and there are a range of ecological niches. So we know that under the arms for example it's hot, humid, close to 37 degrees Celsius whereas the ends of the toes and the fingers in sort of a standard environment are going to be closer to about 29-30 degrees and for example another area of the torso is very dry whereas the around the hair follicles then we're going to get different types of organisms uh, anaerobic organisms for example and it also stands that many of the organisms are still relatively unknown but we do know that we have an abundance of certain types of organisms which gives clues as to human-born contamination it also stands that um, the way that we react with the environment that sometimes organisms from within the body can be produced and we may have particular um, indicator organisms of poorer practices so for example we get an organism called staphylococcus aureus which is responsible for um, MRSA from certain forms so that's a drug resistant uh, gram positive coccus so that has association with the nares of the nose and there are other organisms called streptococci which um, have an association sometimes with weaker mass control. There's also um, considerations about the likelihood of contamination and for this we have a con what we call the contamination triangle. So whether organisms survive once they are shed depends upon where they go and what types of organisms they are and whether they're able to adapt and to survive into the relatively harsh clean room environment. So spore forming organisms for example are more adept to surviving whereas uh, gram negatives are least adept and the human skin organisms are somewhere in the middle. But they still need the appropriate temperature and availability of nutrients and they need a degree of water, a moisture source as well. So they're, again they're key factors that um, need to be uh, looked at. So when organisms are recovered from an environmental monitoring regime then we can tell by the type of organism whether or not it is likely to survive within the clean room environment. Now in terms of the types of organisms the gram-positive cocci as I mentioned are the predominant type and they're found on the outer layer of the human skin and then 
just below in the subcutaneous layers. And as we've seen in previous videos, we're shedding enormous abundances of skin cells and 10 to 20 percent of these skin cells are going to be carrying microorganisms, little rafts of matter that are distributed around the clean room. So we know from a aseptic filling areas that we tend to find lots of micrococci, staphylococci, and then lower numbers of organisms that have a little bit of an association, sometimes with the human skin microbiome, bacillus species and criniforms. And then there are some specific gram negatives that do have a human relationship, such as Acinetobacter, found between the toe webs, and Paracoccus, which is also a skin shed organism. Now, this matters because it also helps us to draw connections. So I said earlier, if an operator interacts in grade A and there's bacterial contamination recovered within grade A, and that contamination is then found perhaps on the operator or somewhere else in the environment, then we can use identification methods and sometimes make uh, take advantage of genetic identification methods and look at the phylogenetic relationship between some of these organisms, which then offers clues, a little bit like being a detective and working out where the contamination may have come from. And also, as I said earlier, changing types of organisms also gives clues as about people, behaviours, practices, perhaps new staff, changes to shifts and so on, uh, about any contamination on room surfaces, room air distributions, and if there happened to be water used, um, say for cleaning purposes, that again may have a particular association. It's also useful when we find something to check whether we found it before and we can start grouping organisms as to where they are common or uncommon. And this also helps with the detective work process. So for example, these are some of the types of organisms that are relatively common within clean rooms in terms of operator-borne contamination. So we have long lists of staphylococci, for example, some of which are pathogenic, but any organism that is found within grade A presents a risk to product and then a potential concern to the patient who is receiving that medicine. We also then have the other organisms, the, the micrococci and dermococcus and cochuria. They're all fairly similar and they're also fairly closely related. So we use this term particularly when we're talking about staphylococci and micrococci, called micrococcaceae. But although they're similar, if we're finding one species like Staphylococcus epidermis or Staphylococcus aureus or Micrococcus luteus, then we can still draw a particular association between event and potential ingress into an area or links to an operator. So again, there's this whole detective tree branch that I've spoken about. So that's the end of the video. So it's just really drawing connections about what a microbiologist does and the reason they place great emphasis upon microbial identification, looking at different types of bacteria, different points of origin, relationships with human skin, and how different areas or different activities join together. So, I'm Tim Sandal. Thank you for watching this video, and I'll be back with you in another video very soon. Cheerio. Keep up the good work. Thank mm -hmm. you.